Several. When the Lord Jesus Christ will be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, these he shall punish with everlasting destruction for the presence of the Lord and the glory of his power. I, I do not mean to like, you know, ruin your game, my friend. I know you guys are excited about this WrestleMania thing. You know, I never actually care about wrestling, but I do have a burden for your soul, my friend. Because I want you to be saved. I want you to be delivered from your sin. The Lord Jesus Christ could deliver you from, my, from your sin, my friend. Like he did to me six years ago. I used to be, uh, uh, I used to say bad words. I used to have healthy communication to out of my mouth. But the Lord Jesus Christ changed me. And the same thing he did for me, he could do it to you, my friend. He could do it to you, my friend. <clears throat> he could do it to you. The same thing he did to me, he could do it for you, my friend. The bad news is, my friend, that you're a sinner in need of a savior. You are a sinner in need of a savior, my friend. You and I have broken God's law. And therefore, we must, you know, be having a count. This is the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for it is the holy of man. For God will bring every worship to judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or evil. This is the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For it is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether it be good or evil. Repent of your sins. The Bible says that God commands all men everywhere to repent. For this coming of day, he will judge the world in righteousness, my friends. Are you ready to stand before God? Are you ready to give an account for your life, my friends? We're not here to condemn you. We're not here to um, uh, stick rocks on you, my friend. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 11, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, nor exhorters to inherit the kingdom of God. But such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were glorified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and for the Spirit of our God. The Lord Jesus Christ will return soon, my friends. He will return soon with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These he shall punish with everlasting destruction for the presence of the Lord and the glory of his power. The Lord Jesus Christ will be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance of those who do not know God and obey not the gospel for Lord Jesus Christ. They he shall punish with everlasting destruction for the presence of the Lord and the glory of his power. And you know, there's, the Bible says that in the last day there'll be mockers and scoffers. Um, fulfilling their own lust. And you want to know what's the evidence that the Bible exists, my friend? I'm going to show you the evidence. You are my, my evidence. Every time you say that God's not real, every time you say um, that God doesn't exist, you are fulfilling Bible prophecy. Did you know that? Did you know that you, yourself is fulfilling Bible prophecy by mocking the Word of God? In Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 says, Don't be deceived. God will not be mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he shall also reap. In Galatians chapter 5 verse 16, it says to walk in the Spirit. So you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lust against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. And these two are contrary one to another. Oh my friends, that's our judgment day is coming. Get right with the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend. Every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So many people, my friends, are not ready for the return of Jesus Christ. So many people are not ready. You're not ready, my friend. So you're fulfilling Bible prophecy by knocking the Bible. When you say stuff like God bless John Cena or that John Cena is God, you're fulfilling Bible prophecy in 2 Peter chapter 3. Verse 3 says, that in the last days there will be mockers and scoffers 
no be mockers and scoffers, the Bible says. First, second Peter chapter 3, it says, Knowing this, that there shall be come in the last days scoffers and walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Like that, we've been living in the last day, folks. Ever since, oh, uh, ever since, um, we've been living in the last day, folks. Ever since the Lord Jesus Christ has left the earth, we're living in the days of Noah, where Matthew chapter 24, verse 37 to 39 says that in the days of Noah, there should be people drinking, eating, and giving to marriage. And that's what we're seeing today, my friends. That's what we're seeing today. <laughs> Get right with God, my friend. Before it's too late, we don't hate you, my friend. We're not here to judge you. We're not here to condemn you. We're here because we love you and we want to see you safe, my friend. God bless you, bro. Repent tonight, my friend. If you're walking around, God, ask God for forgiveness. That you know that, you know, wrestling, you know, I don't know too much about it. But I have a few friends who like wrestling. So let me tell you something, it's just a waste of time in my opinion. I think you should have better times, better things to do, my friend. You know, WrestleMania, you know, uh, like two guys hurting each other, that's just a whole bunch of nonsense to me, my friend. And that's okay if you disagree with me, that's fine. That's all, that's, that's all fine, my friend. That's all fine because, you know, at the end of the day, John Cena, you know, Undertaker, or whoever their names are, I don't know well the, the wrestlers' names, they will bow their knee to Jesus. And in Philippians 2, 9 to 11, it says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You're going to bow before King Jesus, my friend. Those who are watching the sound of my voice, your favorite wrestlers are going to bow before King Jesus. They're going to bow before Jesus Christ. A lot of wickedness is being fulfilled, my friends. You're the fulfillment, if you're a mocker, if you mock the Bible, my friends, you're the fulfillment of Matthew 24 and of 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5 says that in the last days, men will be lovers of themselves. Oh, my friends, it's time for you to get right with God before it's too late, my friends. Those who are walking in the sound of my voice, this know also that in the last days, perilous time shall come, for men will be lovers of their own selves. Lovers of pressure, lovers of pressure, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unfaithful and holy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, inconscient, fierce, despisers of those who are good, failures, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having the or a form of godliness, but denying the power from such people, turn away. Oh, my friends, a lot of you guys are disobeying your parents. A lot of you guys think God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, my friend. And let me tell you something, my friend. If you're a homosexual, if you're a lesbian, you're a sodomite, you're a child of the devil. That's what the Bible says. If you're having sex outside of marriage, you have your father of the devil. If you're smoking weed, you have your father of the devil. If you watch porno, you have your father of the devil. The Bible says that he who sinned, he who sinned of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of Man came to bring the works of the devil in your life. Little children, let no man deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning for this purpose, the Son of Man, which is Jesus Christ. He came to destroy the works of the devil in your life. If you get drunk, my friend, if you, if you smoke pot, if you smoke cocaine or any type of drug, you are you're part of the devil. Now, I'm, I'm not gonna show it at all, my friend. You're the father is the devil, you're not a child of God. And I don't mean it, I don't mean to be condemnful, but it's the truth, my friend. I say this in love because I care about you. That's okay, you know, if you don't agree with me, it's okay. You know, because at the end of the day, God has the final say. God knows, God determines what's right and what's wrong. Not you and not me. We don't have that right to determine what's right and wrong. No, my friend. Get right with the Lord Jesus Christ before it's too late. Judgment Day is coming. Get right with Jesus Christ, my friend. Give up your sin. Follow Jesus Christ. You guys are in, interested in WrestleMania. But are you excited for the return of Jesus Christ? Are you ready to stand before God? What about your eternity? 
What if you were to die today, my friend? Where would you go? You could die in five minutes. You might not even see us again, my friend. Life is like a paper that comes like a little bit of time and then it vanishes away. Life is like a vapor, folks. If you're hearing this word, do not harden your heart, my friend. Do not harden your heart, my friend. You're hardening your heart. Get right with God. Judgment day is coming. If your name is not written in the book of life, it's on fire for you, my friend. If you're homosexual, if you're a lesbian or bisexual or sodomite, you're not going to inherit God's kingdom if you're a drunkard. The Bible says in Galatians 5, 19 to 21, that the works of the flesh is adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, anger, uh, lust. Homosexuality is also a, a work of the flesh, witchcraft. Smoking weed is a uh, work of the flesh. Um, watching porno, dancing and mo dressing in modest, having short shorts on, is also the works of the flesh. Watching wrestling, you're edifying your, you're not edifying your spirit, you're walking in the flesh. And the Bible says in Romans 8, 1, that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. If you're cussing, my friends, if, you, if you're having a filthy words coming out from your mouth, it's a clear sign that you're a child of the devil. That was uh, First John 3, 10 said, In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. Whoever who does not practice righteousness is not of God, neither he who does not love his brother. Those who are passing in the sound of my voice, praise the Lord. Praise God, my friend. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You guys are hearing the message that you ask after I have no excuse on the day of judgment. We're against all sin, my friend. We're not, we're, we're, we're here to love you, my friend. This is love. Because the Bible says in Proverbs 27 that open rebuke is better than love, than secret love. Open rebuke when someone rebukes you for your sin, my friend. It's because we love you and we care about you. And we don't want you to go to hell. There's a place called hell where the worm does not die. And the fire never quenches. The Son of Man will send down his angels and will show gather out of his kingdom. All things that offend and those who practice lawlessness. And shall cast him to the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shall shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of your father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And once again, Matthew 13, go to the words of Jesus. The Son of Man will send down his angels and will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness and will cast him into the furnace of fire. There shall be waiting and gnashing of teeth. Then will the righteous so shine forth at the sun in the kingdom of the Father. He who has wished to hear, let him hear. The wicked is going to be separated. The wicked is going to be separated from God. Psalms 9, 17 says that the wicked shall be turned into hell. And all the nations that forget God. One of those nations is America. America will be turned into a hellfire unless she repents. America is a nation that has forgotten God. America is a nation that calls evil good and good evil. That's America. That's the reality of America. That's Sodom and Gomorrah, my friends. Oh, my friends, get right with God. Turn away from your sin. Follow Jesus Christ. Judgment Day is coming, my friends. Judgment Day is coming, folks. Are you ready to stand before God to give an account for your life? You're going to give an account for your life, my friends, for every every word, every deed that comes from your mouth. Jesus Christ said in Mark 8, 34 to 38, 5, 8, If anyone wants to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever desires to save their life shall lose it. But whosoever loses his life for my sakes and the gospel, the same shall save it. For what should a prophet a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul in the end? For what should a man give his chase for his soul? What should a prophet you? What should a prophet those wrestlers if they gain all the championships in the world and lose their own soul? What should a prophet you, my friend? If your favorite team or your favorite wrestler um, gains everything, but if you don't have Jesus, it doesn't mean nothing in the end. It means nothing if you don't have Christ, my friend. It means nothing if you don't have Jesus, my friend. Nothing is, is worth for you to go to hell for. So, you know, if you're having sex after a marriage, my friend, if you're watching pornography, if you're, if you're smoking weed, or you're drinking, or you're getting drunk, if you're, or if you're, a, ho if you're a homosexual, you're not laughing, my friend, Jesus Christ said that you must deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow Jesus Christ. 
you must stop it, my friend. If you're a lesbian, my friend, you must tell your girlfriend, you must let her go and tell her. That's enough. Enough of my sin. I'm following Jesus Christ. I'm leaving you because that's what I did. I'm, I was never gay, bro, but I, I was always straight. I told my mother and her. And you know, I'm not going to get into a lot of details. But even when I was a Christian, I used to be with someone that wasn't for me, my friend. That's what Jesus uh, commands you to deny yourself. Get right with God, bro. God bless. Thank you. That's what I was saying, my friend. Um, when I, was, when I became a Christian in 2016, I was still dating this girl. She's a Catholic girl. I'm not going to give you guys her name. Because it's not, that's, not, that's not interesting. The interesting part is that the Bible says that I should not be unequally joked with unbelievers. In other words, the Bible that prohibits me to date someone who's not a Christian. And that night, like two, on September 2018, I told her that it was over. It was over. So if you profess to be a Christian, if you're dating someone who's not, who's an unbeliever, if you're dating a Muslim, you're dating a Jehovah's Witness or a Mormon, or a Catholic, or an atheist, you must tell them it's over. That you're going to deny yourself and take up your cross and follow Jesus. Jesus Christ commands everyone to deny you to take up your cross. That means you must die to yourself daily. If you like, if you like wrestling, my friend, give that up. Give it up, my friend. Give it up for Jesus. If I were to ask you tonight, if you love Jesus, how many of you guys will raise your hand? If I ask you, does anyone here love Jesus? I bet you if you say, yes, I do. You with your heart, you don't, my friend. Because Jesus Christ said that those people profess him with his lips, but his heart is far away from him. So many people, my friends in America, they say they love Jesus, but they don't obey him. First, second John 2, 3, 2, 4 says, In this we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments, he that says, I know him, and does not keep my his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. If you say you know Jesus, if you say you love Jesus, but you don't obey him, you're a liar. And the truth is not in you, my friend. So if you're a Christian, my friend, in this afternoon, I don't know you. I don't know if there is. I'm just saying, if you're a Christian, and if you're dating, or you're planning to date an unbelieving uh, uh, girl or woman, read 2 Corinthians 6, 14. God calls you out. He calls you out, my friend. He calls you out. You know, I had like four ex-girlfriends, my friends. And maybe some of you guys are out here. Because maybe your ex-girlfriend dump you or your ex-boyfriend dump you. But let me tell you something. Jesus matters. Jesus will never let you down. Jesus will never fail you. Jesus will never fail you, my friend. He loves you with an everlasting love. Everyone in this world is going to fail you. Except Jesus Christ. He will never fail you, my friend. Jesus never fails you. He will never fail you. He loves you with an everlasting love, my friend. And He wants to give you eternal life, my friend. He died for you on the cross. Something that your ex-boyfriend or, ex or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your ex-girlfriend couldn't do for you. Maybe they do love you. I don't know. But you know, I'm not here to attack you, to condemn you. I'm here to expose all sin, my friend. If you have a girlfriend or a boyfriend, my friend, if they don't want to follow Jesus, then you follow him. Tell your boyfriend, tell your girlfriend that you're going to follow Jesus Christ and you really mean it. Tell them that it's over. Even if it hurts your heart. It's going to hurt, yes. Because my ex-girlfriend was crying when I told her it was over. But it was for my own good, it was for her own good too. And I, I don't regret it one bit, my friend. I don't regret it one bit in following Jesus Christ. It is a hard choice, my friend. It's, very, it's not easy to follow Jesus because you have to surrender everything to Him. It's more of Him and less of you, my friend. And that's what Jesus commands you to do, my friend. He commands all Christians to deny themselves and to take up the cross. Take us to leave. You can say it for later, bro. What sex that I gave you, my friend, you can say them for later. You don't have to read them right now. Say them for later. Read it carefully, my friend. Jesus is calling you to repentance. He's calling you to deny yourself. That's the part of the Christian walk, my friend. That if you want to come after him, you must deny yourself. And in Revelation chapter 21, verse 7 through 8 says, He who overcomes, showing her all things, 
and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, sorcerers, fornicators, idolaters, and no liars, shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Oh, my friends, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow Jesus Christ, my friend. What should a prophet do, my friend? If you gain the, a man in the, the whole, every man and every woman in the world, and you lose your own soul in the end, what should a prophet do, my friend? Nothing is worth for you to go to hell for, my friend. Your weed smoking, your cigarette smoking, your baby murdering, which is abortion, those are sins in the eyes of God. And if you don't believe me, you know, go to Proverbs 6, my friend. I didn't wrote the Bible. If you have a problem with the Word of God, then go take it out with him, go take it out with me. I'm just a messenger, my friend. That's all I am, my friend. I'm just a messenger. That's all I am. Telling you to seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon his day while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he shall have mercy upon him and to our God for he shall abundantly pardon. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon his name while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he shall have mercy upon him and to our God for he shall abundantly pardon. Seek the Lord, folks. Ask God for forgiveness when you get home from WrestleMania. Or the best thing I could tell you, my friend, is to rip those tickets. Throw them in the trash where they belong. Go home and get right with God. Go home and get right with God, my friend. Your sin is not worth it. Your sin offends God, my friend. It offends Him. That you know that sooner or later. Maybe you're excited because, you know, they don't require a lot of stuff. <coughs> but in the near future, my friend, there's something called the mark of the beast where no man will be able to buy or sell. You will not be able to go to WrestleMania or to your favorite game if you don't have the 666 on your right hand or your forehead. He will cause all both small and great, rich and poor, to receive a mark in the right hand or your forehead so that no man will be able to buy or sell except those who have the mark on, on their forehead or on their right hand. Here's wisdom. There's going to be a worldwide leader called the Antichrist who's going to rule the world for three and a half years. What are you going to do if they, if, they, if they tell you that you can't go watch your favorite wrestling game anymore? What are you going to do? Are you going to take it? Or are you going to reject it for Jesus? Let me tell you something. If you take the mark of the beast, my friend, you're going to go to a place called hell where there's weeping, waiting, and actually your teeth, where the world does not die, and the fire never quenches. <coughs> Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father, but by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is Lord, my friends. Give your life to Him. Deny yourself. And take up your cross. And follow Jesus Christ. If you hear me on the sound of my voice. Matthew 7, 13 to 14 says, Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate. And broad is the way that leads into destruction. And there be many with their go their act. Because straight is the gate. And narrow is the way that leads unto life. And only a few are going to find it. Are you one of the many, my friend? Or are you one of the few? Which one are you? Are you the many or the few? Jesus Christ said that many on the broad path that leads to hell. And only a few are going to find it to heaven. Why? Because believing in Jesus is not enough, my friend. James 2.19 says that even demons will even they tremble. But what do you do? A foolish man in faith without works is dead. You believe that there's one God? You do well. But even the devils believe and tremble. So in other words, believing in Jesus is not enough, my friends. You must repent. You must forsake your sin. You must live a holy life. Because without peace and holiness, you cannot see God, my friend. Hebrews 12, 14 says that without peace and holiness, you cannot see the Lord. Get right with God. Those who are the son of my voice, get right with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ will come soon, my friend. He's not going to come back. And the baby has a major. He's not going to be... He, he's not going to come as the Lamb of God, the Lamb that was slain. He's going to come back as the roaring lion. He's going to come back as the tribe of the Lion of Judah. Praise the Lord. Every knee will bow. Your favorite wrestlers, my friend. Those of you guys idolize and worship. 
They will bow their knee to Jesus and they will confess with their tongue that Jesus Christ is Lord. All of you guys who are watching on the sound of my voice, you're going to stand before God. You're going to give an account to God for your life, my friend. And you will have no excuse on the day of judgment that no one told you, my friend. Because God sent two crazy preachers at Crypto Arena in March 31st, 2023 to tell you the good news, my friend. <coughs> and in 10 years from now, this thing that you're going to go watch, it won't matter no more. It's not going to matter no more on Judgment Day, my friend. Get right with God, my friends. Get right with God in Los Angeles. Repent of your sins. If you want God to bless you, repent. Put away your sins. Judgment Day is coming. Judgment Day is coming, my friend. Judgment Day is coming. And the other Jesus is cerca. He dice, uh, Segunda de Crónica 714. Sí. Me dice humillar a mi pueblo, sobre el cual mi nombre es invocado, y orar y buscar en mi rostro, y convertieran sus malos caminos, entonces yo iré hasta los cielos, y perdonaré sus pecados y sanaré su tierra. Para los que no hablan inglés, te estoy predicando en español, amigo. Si se humillar a mi pueblo, sobre el cual mi nombre es invocado, y orar y buscar en mi rostro y se convierte en sus malos caminos, entonces yo iré desde los cielos y perdonaré sus pecados y sanaré su tierra. Oíste, amigo, esta es una condición. Tú que estás caminando por este lugar, es my people, we shall call by my name. What am I saying, my friends? If my people, we shall call by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked way, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Jesus Christ, God the Father, He says that if you turn away from your wicked way, He will forgive you. He will heal your land. So therefore, America must humble herself. They must turn away from their baby killing which is abortion. They must turn away from Satan sex marriage. Against homosexuality, that will shoot them away. If you had an abortion, my friend, you must ask God for forgiveness. You must ask God for forgiveness, my friend, for all your sin. If you want healing, if you want the Jewess, is as a nation, you must humble yourself because God resists the proud, but He gives grace unto the humble. Resist the devil, and He will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. And purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and warn them. Weep. Let your mourning, let your laughter turn into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of God and He will lift you up, my friend. If you're a prideful sinner, my friend, if you're, if you're say gay pride or black pride or you're or proud or well, these lines that says, my body, my choice, God will not hear you, my friend. God's going to resist you. That's pride. Pride goes before destruction. And the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit before the heart, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know, <coughs> bear with me, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm sorry if I misquoted the Bible for you, I didn't mean to my friend, remember, I'm not all knowing, God is but not me, I'm not all knowing my friend, I'm not all knowing, I'm not all knowing folks, don't expect me to know everything because I don't, and again, I'm not here to hate on you my friend, I'm here to love you, you know, I'm here to love you. I love you, my friend. That's why I, I, I don't hate nobody, folks. <laughs> These things, love the Lord, hate, yes, seven are an abomination, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood with the abortion, and heart that devises wicked imagination, speed that be stripped and running into mischief. A false witness that speaketh a lie. And that he that swept discord among the brethren. If you saw discord, my friend, if you're a liar, my friend, if you lie about anything, you don't just off your father the devil. It's that simple, my friend. And the Bible says that God hates all workers of iniquity. Yes, Jesus loves you. We don't have nothing against uh, other Christians preaching to you that Jesus loves you. He does love you. But he also has a holy hatred for sinners. Psalm 5 5. It says that God hates all workers of iniquity. God, God hates the workers of the nigga, my friends. 
Dahil uh, before he super baby murder, uh, God hates homosexuality. He also hates homosexuality. He's gonna send him to hell. But you don't have to be one no more, my friend. You could be delivered. You could. You don't have to cry out to God and ask God for forgiveness. <clears throat> ask God for forgiveness, folks. You don't have to be God's enemy no more. As a sinner, my friend, you're an enemy. You're you're God's enemy as a sinner. But you don't have to be God's enemy, my friend. No, my friends, you guys don't have to be an enemy of God anymore. You can become a friend of God. You can become a child of God. In John 8, 12, in John 1, 12 says that. You can become a child of God, my friend, through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, my friend. You can become a, a child of God. I just flip it. I'm not a I'm not a That's what I was saying, my friend. <clears throat> That's what I was saying, my friend. You know, we, we hate sin because God hates sin, but there's a thing that we can't do. We can hate you guys. We could hate your sin because the Bible says that those who love righteousness uh, love God. You know, we are a Christians, my friend. We are commanded to hate what God hates and love. And love what God loves. We love you guys because if we didn't love you guys, we wouldn't be here at all. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry about that, guys. That's what I was saying, my friend. You must forsake your sin. If you want God to to um to heal your land, if you want God to heal California, you must turn away from the sins that I mentioned. You must get right with God, folks. You must tear up your ticket, keep taking where belongs in the garbage. And you deny yourself and follow Jesus. Buy a Bible instead. <coughs> you know. Before I pass it to this brother, I'm going to tell you something. You no. Know? This is the good news. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him shall not perish. But have everlasting life. For God sent not even to the world to condemn the world, for the world is in mind to say. He that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already. And Luke 13, 3 says that unless you repent of your sins, you shall lie with perish in hell. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As no man counts slackness, but as not suffering to us work. You not know, willing that any shall perish in hell, but for all to repent of their sins. God commands all men everywhere to repent. For it's coming a day he will judge the world in righteousness, folks. <coughs> God commands all men and women everywhere to repent of their sins. Repent, my friend. I don't want you to be judged by God, my friend. You know, the Bible says in Revelation 3, 19, that he, he Jesus loves, he rebukes and chases them. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Children, little children walking around, little kids. Kids, if you're listening to my voice, Jesus Christ is Lord and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. You need to repent. You need to Call upon the name of Jesus Christ, bro. The Lord put me here for you. The Lord put me here for you, bro. Yeah, you, bro. Security guard with the hoodie. <laughs> Jesus loves you. And he's saying it's time. It's time to come home. It's time to come home. It's time to come home. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 
It's only through Jesus Christ. This is WrestleMania. I know you guys love WrestleMania. I know you guys are fans of WrestleMania. Otherwise, why else would you be here? I know you guys have eyes. I know you guys have common sense. I know you guys can think. You, do you not see how the WWE company, do you not see how WrestleMania mocks the Bible? There's an event called Judgment Day that they get from the Bible. Chris Jericho has a signature move or had a signature move called the Walls of Jericho. That's from the Bible. There's some guy, wrestler here, some really big guy that is called the Almighty. But he's not the Almighty, he's just a man. The Almighty is the Lord Jesus Christ. Hell in a Cell is a thing that Amen. WrestleMania and, and wrestling does. They know that you're deceived. They know that you're stupid. They know that you're just going to consume. You see, Satan puts this in your face. Hell in a Cell. Your favorite superheroes, your favorite movies, they all stem from the greatest truth that ever happened historically. Jesus. Amen. Jesus Christ of Nazareth who came to save and seek that which was lost, who came to bleed on the cross for you. <laughs> Jesus Christ died for you that you may live. Jesus Christ is the Almighty. You might have heard about Jesus. You might think that you are right with God. You might call yourself a Christian. You might think that you're right with God because you're a Catholic. You might think that you're right with God because you pray seven times a day to Allah. You might think that you're right with God because you believe in God. But there's only one way to heaven. There's only one way to be right with the Lord. And this is through Jesus Christ. It's not through any other way. It's only through Jesus Christ. The story of the Bible, the, the Bible says, it's a, it's a historical book. It's not a fairy tale, it's not just a book to control you, whatever you might have thought, but it is the words of your maker, it is the word of God. And it talks about the coming of the Messiah of Jesus Christ who would come out of Israel, out of the tribe of Judah. The Bible takes us from the story of God's chosen people, the Israelites. This is God's people according to the flesh, this body. And it shows his love towards mankind by sending his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for the sins of the world. You see, it is spring today, it is, it is spring, the weather, the season, and as you can tell it stopped raining. It's a nicer day out today. Around this time, over 2,000 years ago, the Lord Jesus Christ, the maker of heaven and earth, He smote, He killed, He destroyed the Egyptians who were who were having his people, the Israelites, captive in Egypt. The Lord told the Israelites to kill a lamb and to put his blood upon their doorpost. That he was going to kill Pharaoh and the Egyptians. He was going to pour out his wrath onto them. 
but all those that had the blood of the lamb on their doorpost he did not touch this was a foreshadowing of the lamb of god that takes away the sins of the world it was a foreshadowing that jesus would come and shed his blood for the sins of the world that whosoever would call upon his name might be saved you see right now you're under condemnation the wrath of god abides on you if you were to die today without being covered in the blood of Yahusha, of Jesus, of Jesus Christo, of Yesu, of Jesus Christ, you would be cast straight into hell because you chose to not believe in the one that came to save you. You chose to not receive God's mercy and forgiveness. You see, this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, but men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. If you look at this world, it promotes darkness, it promotes evil. This WrestleMania SmackDown concert show, whatever it is that you're gonna watch, pay attention to the words that the announcers speak, pay attention to the symbolism, pay attention to the words that they say they're going to mock the Bible. They're going to mock and use things from the Bible. Now that I've spoken this to you, remember this and keep an eye out for it. You see, Jesus Christ is the only one that has risen from the dead. Jesus Christ is alive forevermore. Jesus Christ has made you Jesus Christ has given you this very breath that you're breathing right this very moment. And if he's so pleased, he could smite you down today. He can kill you. He can take your life for it is his to give and take. But he is merciful. He is good, waiting patiently on you. That if you would hear his voice, that you would finally come and see the truth and repent for there is only one god and one mediator between man and god and this is the man christ jesus there is no other way there is no other way you must repent today today is the day of salvation no other religion no other god no other idol no other practice nothing no money Nothing can ever get you into heaven. Today you're paying money to get into this WrestleMania SmackDown thing. You're spending your hard-earned money on people that don't care about you, that don't love you, that won't die for you. you your life sucks. You hate it. You smoke weed. You get drunk. You're in a job that you don't like. You're going through the motions day by day. You carry around this weight on your body, on your heart. And you're escaping today with a quick little vacation to see some grown men in tights and underwear wrestle each other. You're giving them your hard-earned money. And then you come outside and you, you're drunk and then a car hits you and you die and you go to hell. That's the reality of a lot of people. It's happened and people are dying today and they're going straight to hell. They're going straight to hell. They have no second chances so it's time today to repent it's time to call upon the name of the lord bro it's time to call upon the name of the lord you're not an idiot you're smart you could see you have a tv you have a phone you can put pieces together you know the end is near you know it's the last days you see the news you see what's going on in the world in china with Trump, with, with this wicked devil, President Joe Biden, you see what's going on. You know, they they just made you take a, a shot in your body for like two years and they didn't allow you to go in a store. Everything seemed crazy. It's gonna get worse. And we're telling you to hop on the boat, put your life jacket on. The boat of salvation is Jesus Christ. 
You need to repent and get right with the Lord. The sword coming on the land. You will not escape the wrath of God. God is angry with the wicked every day. God is mad at your sin. God is mad at the abominations that go on in the land. But he's given you grace today. He's given you grace today to repent, to call upon his name. You can be saved. You can be healed. You can be transformed. You can be a new creation. You don't have to suffer with depression anymore. You don't have to be a homosexual anymore. You don't have to be a drunkard anymore. You don't have to be a fornicator anymore. You don't have to be confused. You don't have to not be able to sleep. You can be made whole by the power of Jesus Christ. And this is why he came. He came that you may have life and have it in abundance. You are broken. You are uh, incomplete without the Spirit of the Lord Most High. You need Jesus Christ. You need Jesus Christ. Repent and believe the Gospel. Repent and believe in the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, Jesus Christ. Officers, God bless you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your work. Thank you for your service. Repent, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. For anybody, you can die today. You can die whenever. Why have you not died? Why are you still alive? You know, everybody, every person is always wondering, what's the meaning of life? People wonder that, right? I was wondering that so hard. I was, I was seeking that so much. You talk to many people. They say, oh, we can't know. We just can't know. What's the meaning? Nobody knows. I remember thinking, nobody's come back and told us. They know all these things, allegedly. They know the sun is 999 whatever billion miles away, allegedly. They know that, you know, this happens when you mix these two uh, ingredients. They know all this nonsense, but nobody can tell us the meaning of life. And I know that you're thinking and you've wondered what is the meaning of life before because you're a human being and the, and you want to know you see there's a study i believe it was by princeton university that said that children they did a study they made they, they, they spent so much so many thousands hundreds of thousands of dollars and they said that children when they're when they're little no they don't have to be taught that there is a god they know that there is a god but as they grow up their surroundings the the influence around through tv through parents through you know uh, your, app, your, your surroundings, they, it influences the child to then stray away from that belief. You see, the Bible says that it is, it is, the evidence is in your face, you know that God exists. But now the question is, which God is real? I know you've questioned which God is real. I know you've questioned who is Jesus, why Jesus. I know you've questioned what about that? What about this religion? What about that religion? What about your own spirituality? What about you know, uh, you know, praying to Buddha, praying to all these other things. How come, how come only one can be right? You know, you've been seeking the truth. You've been wondering. And Jesus has put me here today to tell you he is the truth. He's the truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the only way. He is the truth. You will find rest for your soul. You will find peace of mind. That is why your life is falling apart. That is why your life is in shambles. That is why you have no peace of mind. That is why you carry this burden. That is why your thoughts consume you. That is why you don't have an identity. That is why you're so easily deceived and slapped around by Satan. That is why you're dying your hair. That is why you're getting tattoos. That is why you're looking for a new job to earn more money. That is why you want to be somebody because you're missing your identity. And that identity is that you were created for the Lord Most High to worship Him in spirit and in truth, to love Him, to glorify Him. This is what you're missing. You're missing God. And God is calling you today. He's saying it is time repent i can set you free 
from cigarettes, I can set you free. From drugs, I can set you free from hating me. You know, God knows that you're angry at God. God knows, you know, you hate God, but he's still allowing you to live. He's still allowing you to breathe today. That's how good he is. The Bible says that God is kind even to the unthankful and to the wicked, to the evil. You know, you're walking around here on, on God's green earth parading as if you own it. You're walking around here thinking that you're somebody, thinking that you're invincible, thinking that you, you're the, you, you own your own life. Your life is not even your own. God can take your life. You know how you see cockroaches on the ground? You see ants, you see the, and you're just like, oh, I'll just step on them. That's how more powerful you are than them and they just die. That's how we are as humans. God is more powerful than us. God is good, God is holy, God is just, and He is, he is good. That's the, that's the thing that you have to know. God is good, and He wants you to know Him personally. Just like I know this brother right here personally, how I speak to him, how he speaks to me, how I could, I could touch him, I could feel him. God wants to touch you, God wants you to know Him, and He's revealed Himself in Jesus Christ. He's revealed everything that he is in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the, the visible image of the invisible God. Jesus Christ is good. The Bible says that he is the good shepherd. He lays down his life for the sheep. He gave his life for you that you may live. You know, some of you might have already been given over to a reprobate mind where you don't even, these words that I'm speaking, you're not even phased by, you're just walking by, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're deaf, you're blinded. And that's a scary thing because God will give you over. You see, it says because God did not, it says that, that, that man did not choose to retain God in their knowledge, in their heart, so God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things that are not lawful to do all these you know abominations and wickedness this is this is what happens when you forget god you know this world that we're living in is going down the drain it's going down the drain it's it's the end it's the end it's the end of days it's the end of times you need to repent and get right with the lord judgment day is coming Judgment Day is coming. The real Judgment Day. Not the knockoff Judgment Day that WrestleMania likes to mock. But the Judgment Day where every man will stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. You will stand before the Lord Almighty. And you will give an account of everything that you've done in your body. You will have to give an account. Now how do you get into heaven? Most people say, oh, I, if I do these good things, I get into heaven. Islam says, if I do more good deeds than bad deeds, I get into heaven. You know, Catholics say, oh, if I do good deeds and have faith, I get into heaven. Oh, you know, Buddhism says you're your own God. You have to be elevated. You have to, you know, go to the, the, the be enlightened until you, you know, you get it right. But that's not true. That's not true. You see, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. The soul that sins shall die. You see, the soul that sins shall die. You're going to die one day. You're on your way to hell. You're on your way to hell. Where you will be raped. You will be raped by demons. You will be, it won't be like partying and good times. It won't be with your friends. You'll be alone in torment. No hope. Bro, go on YouTube. Go on YouTube. Look up hell testimonies. Thousands, millions of people. The Lord has sent them to hell to experience that. To know. And then they come back and they say, Hell is real. Heaven's real. Jesus is real. Use the, use the internet. Go up and, and look up who is Jesus Christ. You're going to know the truth, man. I'm telling you. You're going to know the truth and you won't be the same. You'll, you'll be set free. So, the way to salvation is through Jesus Christ. He 
comes as a man like you and me in a fleshly body. Yeah, bro, you. <laughs> he comes like you and I. He comes in the flesh to walk around like you and me, but he never sins. So he, he's the perfect, holy, blameless lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He dies on the cross. He takes our sin on his body. And God the Father sees that. He sheds his blood for the forgiveness of many. He lives the life that you should have lived because we have all sinned. We're not perfect. And he dies the death on the cross for us. So now you have a chance to be forgiven of this sin. You cannot go into heaven with sin. Just like you can't go into this building without a ticket. You can't go into this building without paying money to the company to let you in the door. Security is gonna gonna throw you out if you say, "Let me." Uh, if you try to just walk in there, if you try to just walk in there, you know they're gonna kick you out. They're not gonna let you go in there, you know. So if you try to get into heaven your own way just by doing whatever you want, you're not gonna be able to go in there. The only way to go to heaven is by Jesus Christ by making sure. By putting your faith in him and he'll wash you clean he'll wash you clean of all your sin he'll make you whole and when you get to heaven you'll be a, you, you know the Lord is gonna say well done my good and faithful servant come in to the joy of the Lord prepare for you from the foundation of the world you become a child of God you're not born a child of God Jesus said you must be born again you're not just born and you're just oh I'm a child of God because my parents are Catholic, my parents are Christian. Oh, because I believe in God, I'm a child of God. No, you don't become a member. You don't, you're not just born a member at LA Fitness. You're not just born a member of a certain school. You're not just born, you know, uh, a part of WrestleMania. You must become, you must apply. So if you want to apply to get into heaven, God made it simple. He said, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. But you must believe it. What does it mean to truly believe? It's not just something you've said or something you can agree that it sounds like it's true. You got to believe it. And if you believe it, you're going to obey him. He's going to give you the Holy Spirit and you'll be born again of the Spirit of God. He's going to give you a new nature. Your old sinful nature will be gone. You're going to want to do good. You're going to want righteousness. You're going to want to be holy now. The old things that you used to do, you won't even want to do. The things you're trying to get rid of today on your own strength, God can take them away in one day, in one second. I'm here to testify that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Jesus Christ has saved me. I used to be like you. And right now, as I stand as a man, I'm no better than you. I'm just a man, but all I know is that Jesus Christ lives inside of me. And he, he has set me free. And he's given me power over all of the enemy to trample on snakes and scorpions. He's made me whole. He's given me peace of mind. He's given me eternal life and forgiveness of sins. I don't have to smoke weed anymore to go to sleep. I don't have to get drunk to feel good, to feel confident. I don't have to sleep around with girls to feel cool. I don't have to do what the world does anymore because what the world does leads you to hell. What the world says is good, is bad. You see, just like you're walking into this building with the world, you're on your way to hell. The broad is the road that leads to destruction. But narrow is the path that leads to life. Very few find it. Will you find life? Or will you hold on to this world and your sin and lose your life? Islam is not the way. It's not the way. Jesus is the way. He is the only way. Jesus Christ is the only way. Jesus Christ is the only way. Jesus Christ, bro. <laughs> hey, God bless you, bro. Jesus can set you free from the cigarettes and anxiety. You don't got to be anxious. You know, Jesus set me free. I used to smoke weed. I used to smoke cigarettes. 
Yeah. Can you? It's true. Hey, did you grow up Catholic? You have a you have a mom? You have a dad? You grew up Catholic? What what do your parents believe? Nothing? Bro, you gotta go to hell, bro. Hey, I grew up Catholic just because my parents said they were Catholic. My mom said I'm Catholic. I thought I I was good, but yeah, I'm, I'm you know, but when for this the guy Bible, over there. the Catholic Church preaches and teaches is not in the Bible. So well, people lies, are people accepting are drinks from this guy, but they don't want these. A little bit harsh. Jesus is coming. Jesus Christ is coming. We're going to wrap it up soon, buddy. He's coming to judge the world in righteousness, bro. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Where will you go when you take your last breath? Sir, where will you go? Sir, where will you go when you take your last breath? Ozzy Osbourne 